my dear brothers and sisters we have many questions with regard to mary mother of god mother of jesus and today i would like to answer some of those questions which you may have in your mind i would like to share five very important aspects connected to mary the mother of god the first very important thing is mary has been created in a very special way with a special grace to understand that we need to look at adam and eve when god created the first parents adam and eve he gave them a grace the original grace and it was the plan of god that they should pass on that grace to the next generation to their children and so everyone who would be born of adam and eve would receive the original grace which god had given to adam and eve but that plan of god did not succeed because they refused to obey the will of god and they committed the sin and the reason why they committed the sin according to them the fruit which they are not allowed to eat as we find in the book of genesis chapter 3 verse 6 it's it says the fruit has three important qualities it was good to look at it was delicious to taste and also it would make a person wise and it had all the qualities to be eaten and so adam and eve disobeyed the command of god and they committed the first sin so instead of passing on the original grace to their children unfortunately they passed on the original sin and so all of us are born with the original sin because of the first sin of adam and eve and so god had decided to create a person with a special grace and that person is none other than mary the mother of jesus long before god created mary he had intended that she should be created with the fullness of grace and from the very first moment of her conception right till the time she was taken up into heaven she had been protected from committing any sin why because she was filled with the fullness of grace and that is why any time we pray we simply say hail mary full of grace because mary is the only person who is created with the fullness of grace very special privilege the second very important thing we find about mary is she had been chosen to be the mother of god to be a mother for a woman is a great privilege is a great blessing it's a unique opportunity to be part of the great plan of god but to be the mother of god is the greatest of privilege 
a person could ever get. And that is why Mary is said to be blessed among women. And that is how Archangel Gabriel greeted her. Blessed are you among women. And it's perhaps the unique, special, very particular, and perhaps the greatest of privilege that a person could receive. And Mary was the person chosen to be the mother of God, and she had this extraordinary privilege to be the mother of Jesus, the mother of God. The third very important thing we find about Mary is it was not by chance that she was chosen. It was not by mere, merely happened. But it is from the eternal plan of God. Mary had been specially chosen to fulfill a unique role in the church. And that is why we find in St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 26. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. So the entire background of Mary is very clearly explained in St. Luke's Gospel, that this young lady was a virgin. She was married to St. Joseph of the house of David, of the lineage of King David. And to that particular person, God sent the special messenger. And the special messenger is Archangel Gabriel. And Archangel Gabriel is known as the one who brings the message to people. And he was the one chosen to bring God's message to Mary. And initially, Mary was surprised. Initially, she was wondering why this is happening. But the angel gave her assurance. And the assurance is, do not be afraid, Mary. And from that moment onwards, Mary began to experience fearlessness. And that fearlessness of Mary came from her trust in God, a complete trust in God. And that complete trust in God is summed up in that one very beautiful sentence which we find in St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 1. Verse 38. And Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And so we find Mary experienced fearlessness, courage because of her complete trust in God. And the next very important thing we find about Mary is her unique relationship with God, her unique understanding, appreciation to the plan of God, and her unique understanding, appreciation to the plan of God is her total surrender and offering of herself in obedience to the plan of God. Mary, from the moment she received 
the message from Archangel Gabriel right till the end when she was assumed, taken up into heaven, she remained totally, completely and perfectly obedient in doing the will of the Father. And when we look at Mary, her life, her life manifests that one word, yes, yes to the plan of God, yes to the will of God. And that yes of Mary is a total and a complete offering. And she offered by surrendering herself to the plan of God. And that is precisely why Mary occupies such a unique, important place in the Catholic Church. And we also find another very important aspect in the life of Mary. And that is summed up in St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 45. In St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 45, we find very unique sentence about the life of Mary. And it is said, And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. Blessed is she who believed Mary totally and completely trusting in the plan of God, trusting in the will of God, she believed. From the time she received the message from Archangel, her life was a journey in faith. And to live by faith is a challenge. To live by faith in the unknown and to follow the plan of God is a challenge. Most of us, when we think about our life, we have great dreams, great plans for us. We not only plan, but we also wish certain things to happen in our life. But Mary is totally a different person. She chose not to make any plans for her because she totally and completely accepted the plan that was given to her by God. And having accepted the plan, she simply lived in faith. And because she lived in faith, trusting in God, she is called by the writer, St. Luke. He calls her blessed. And so, Twice we find Mary is addressed as blessed among women and blessed is the one who believes. So Mary is, so to say, doubly blessed. Doubly blessed to be the mother of God. A unique privilege. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, we have a number of questions. Why Mary occupies such a prominent, unique place in the Catholic Church? And the reasons are, a particular time, God had chosen Mary to be the mother of God. And that is why Archangel Gabriel was sent to her at that particular time in that particular state of her life. And once Archangel Gabriel came, she received the message. And once she received God's message, she, it took a while for her to understand that message, that she has been specially chosen to be the mother of God. She accepted that privileged role in her life. 
And once she accepted that great privilege, that privileged role in her life, the next important thing we find is she surrendered herself to the plan of God, totally, completely offering herself to the will of God. And she said, yes, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Whatever you want, let it be done. Let it happen in my life. And from that moment onwards, we find that Mary began to live her life in faith. Her journey is a journey in faith. And in the Catholic Church, we attribute faith to Mary. In the Old Testament, Abraham is known as the man of faith. And in the New Testament, Mary is the woman of faith. If we are looking for a model for faith, it is Mary. Because Christ had no faith. He had no faith because he knew everything. Mary had faith. She did not know what is going to happen tomorrow or the days to come. But she lived in faith. And that is why whenever we look at Mary, we look at her with the same faith that Mary had. And if, my dear brothers and sisters, if we really want to sum up the entire life of Mary, we can sum it up in one sentence which we find in St. Luke's Gospel. And that is chapter 1 of St. Luke's Gospel, verse 37. And we read, For with God nothing will be impossible. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Mary is one great example for all of us to look at her and for the extraordinary things the Lord has done for Mary that we can say in confidence, certainly nothing is impossible for God. Whatever God land, he was able to accomplish one by one in sequence as he wanted because Mary complied, conformed and agreed totally, completely and perfectly to the plan of God. For all these reasons, Mary occupies a very, very prominent, unique an important place in the Catholic Church. And all the followers of Christ, we approach Mary as mother of God, as an intercessor, as one who understands us, as one who would answer as in our prayers, because she intercedes to God on our behalf. So we don't worship Mary, we don't adore Mary, but we relate to Mary as a loving mother and share, pour out our prayers, petitions to Mary, and she, as a mother, intercedes on our behalf. Because for God, nothing is impossible. Amen. God bless you.